Run for the Song podcast. And apparently, they, they, this is quite interesting. They recorded the basic tracks live and then overdubbed a few bits on most of the songs. So that's probably why you get that kind of more of a raw live sound. And then yeah. they did on, and then the two songs, Very Ape and Tourette's, they recorded in a kitchen. Well, the, the drums were recorded in a kitchen because the, they like the reverb of that room. So that's quite cool. I didn't know anything about that until I looked it up. Oh, no, that's cool. But they, they must have like been in this kitchen making food or whatever and just heard the sound. So they thought, oh, look, this, this, chuck the drum kit in here. But apparently you used 30 mics on the drum kit. Holy but smokes. For the, for the whole album. I, I think that's for the whole album. It wasn't that clear, but it sounds like they, they used a lot of microphones, basically. And he doesn't have a big yeah. kit, really, does he? So, you know, one tom, no. one tom. I saw it, I think when Foo Fighters done that um, Sonic Highway thing, didn't they, a couple of years back, and they went back to, well, they went to Steve Albini's studio, they done one of the songs with him, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. And um, I think it was a case of, he's just got some crazy ideas for mic placements and stuff, like, and the way his room is and rooted and everything. I think he's got, whereas sometimes, like, recording with your brother, Dame, and, like, you'll always do the odd thing, like, oh, chuck a microphone out in the corridor, like something yeah. like they do up in Rockfield and stuff, yeah. and do the odd couple of quirky things, like, but I think Steve Albini was very, he's very much that experimental, like, let's try this and have microphones hanging from the ceiling and everywhere, whatever. Yeah, well, try and get that. Yeah, well, it definitely it helps. The more, you know, if you've got, if you've got the amount of tracks to play with and you've got that many microphones, why not, innit? You know, yeah. it's better but to have more than less to play with at the end when you mix it. Yeah. Yes. So. I remember that there's that one song again, title wise, I haven't got a clue, Stasi, you'll know it. But it starts with the drums and it's got that very much that like the same way that that yeah. No that it's that dun dun get on get it's class. I remember sitting when I was a kid trying to play that and just like trying to keep my right hand steady. So it's a dun 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 dun. I can do it. I'm like stuttering all over the place. Like I just remember, like there's certain the signature sound and the signature like rhythm and stuff like that drum path, like sort of thing. And when I went to see Foo Fighters, it's got to be about two three years ago now when they played in the West Ham's ground. Oh, nice. The old Olympic Stadium, the London City Stadium or something it's called now, isn't it? Yeah. And they were doing um, Under Pressure by Queen. And Die Drums is on the drums. Yeah. And um, at the end of it, he done the, the beginning of Smells Like Teen Spirit. So to, to close out the song, they play in and, the, and then he goes... And literally, me and Dawes, you'll know Dawes, Neil used to drive for us, obviously, back in the day. He plays drums as well, massive Nirvana fan. And he's done that. And literally, and I think we weren't the only ones. Everyone just went, like, just like so taken aback because it was that person playing that bit. Everyone knew what. Mm that was like oh it was just it was like it's a two second clip if that yeah, and so. um it's having those certain things like only i think only certain bands certain drummers um have signature drum parts that yeah. you can play to pretty much anyone and they'll know what song that is like and i think nirvana had a bunch of them like yeah and, they're uh, not just that they had lows didn't they that obviously that's yeah. the most famous one Run for the Shaw podcast.